So I liked a pair of boots from this company so much, <laughs> I quickly reordered another one. <laughs> How are you going? My name is Tech, and welcome back to my Bootlosophy channel. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording on, the Wajik people of Noongar Buja. Now, this box arrived from uh, Wisconsin, which should give you a clue. Uh, this is from Russell Moccasin. Uh, you can see my review of the uh, backcountry up here. And I, I so like those boots so much, so comfortable, that uh, when I saw the Zephyr boot come back and to be restocked, I immediately ordered one. So let's go in. I'll unbox the boots and we'll talk about them as we go. So it's a, it's a really simple box, just basically uh, one opening. And uh, that should open out the box. Right, what have we got here? We've got a new card. I don't think I saw this in the back country. Uh, Russell Moccasin footwear for outdoor folks. Uh, talks about exchanges, returns, use a QR code or link to submit the exchange. So that makes it easy. Great customer service. Shipping sheet. Uh, they don't come with boot bags. I guess befitting the, the outdoor um, uh, philosophy behind uh, Russell Moccasin. But they are protected behind this paper wrapping, which is extremely noisy. And here's a first look at the Zephyr boot. Now, for those of you, you might, who uh, are not used to Russell Moccasin, you might think this is a little bit weird. And it looks a little bit to me. Uh, it's, it's a hunting boot built along the same lines as the backcountry, uh, being that it is a true moccasin construction in the sense that uh, the vamp, this part here, is wrapped up, lasted from the bottom up. So the, this piece of leather goes all the way through, and then the apron piece is sewn on. Uh, it's a double vamp construction, as far as I'm aware, same as the backcountry, in the sense that there is another leather sock on the inside, which is also lasted from the bottom up, but sewn uh, on the top. And in this way, that creates a sort of a water resistance because uh, you have this outer vamp that goes in, and then an inner vamp with the stitching up at the top um, so if anything penetrates, it's not going to get through the second layer. And what then happens is the uh, midsole, this is a true midsole and it's not the welt, is Blake stitched into the outside welt. Uh, and you might say, wait, what's, where's the water resistance? Well, because it's Blake stitched into the outside welt, but the inside welt doesn't have any uh, seams or stitches, that creates that water resistance there. And apart from that, it's obviously well glued and so on. The outside of the midsole is then stitched right through uh, the midsole, uh, but not the rubber uh, slip sole. There's a little rubber slip sole that's glued on there so that there's a better adhesion. Sorry, I beg your pardon. The, the stitching on the outside goes through the midsole and that uh, rubber slip sole, which is glued and stitched. And that rubber slip sole provides a better adhesion for the rubber outsole that you glue it on. So if, if you're going to re, re, um, resole this with damage to the outsole, what your cobbler does is, is remove the outsole up to there, leaving the rubber slip sole stitched, and glue another piece on. Um, let's have a quick look at the aesthetics. So it's a, it's a proper mock token uh, construction with the apron that's stitched through, uh, and the, the apron piece wraps over the seam to provide uh, further water resistance along, along this line. Hand stitched, as you can see, there is no way you can fake that. So that's hand stitched. Uh, it gives off engineer boot vibes with the buckle, but obviously as a, as a sort of slip on boot with no lacing, it gives you the ability to tighten down the instep. The closure is mainly on the zip which is a YKK zip and it has a gusset inside so again there's no water penetration through the teeth of the zip. This will give you really I guess a, a, a sort of better grip 
a better tightness than if you had like an engineer boot, another buckle up there. The leather is from SB Foot. It's, uh, that's Red Wings Tannery. Uh, it's a very heavily oil-infused leather. You can see the pull-up effect. This is, I put pressure on it. Uh, and it feels very waxy on the surface. So, you know, again, aids uh, water penetration or lack of water penetration. Uh, very soft uh, leather. This is called, I think this is called their walnut color. The leather is called Timberjack. The construction, as far as I can see, utilitarian, but fine, clean. Uh, the stitching is utilitarian, but clean, uh, hand-stitched double stitched where it counts for support with a, with a little heel backstay. That is oak tanned heel counter in there. And uh, I think that's a leather structure on the toe sniffer, uh, stiffener, uh, which is effectively the two vamps and a little piece of uh, leather in there. The inside is unlined, uh, but the vamp has that inner sock lining. Everything looks very clean, very neat. Let's take a look at the other boot. Oh, sticker. Who doesn't like stickers? Take out the other boot, and I'll get rid of the packaging. Again, really nicely put together. I use the word utilitarian. It's not a, it's not a fine dressy boot. Uh, hand stitching. The uh, heel area is obviously lasted quite tightly, which pulls the oils uh, off the leather. Oh, a little bit of conditioner there. I guess a last sort of bit of, bit of conditioning before it gets sent out. A little bit of conditioner on the uh, on the outsole there. The edges have been sanded. Really nice. Veg tan leather midsole, full rubber slip sole, and then the outsoles stitched on. Uh, brass buckle. Nice sort of heavy rounded buckle and a brass YKK zip. If you think that looks a bit funny, well, perhaps it does if you're not used to it, but don't forget your jeans will come down to here or your pants, so you're really not gonna see it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try these on and then we'll uh, keep talking about them. Okay, let's try them on. I've undone the buckle in readiness. Uh, unzip, and as a pull-on boot, I guess you pull them on like cowboy boots or engineer boots. Oh, there's a plunk as you put it through the heel. Now I'm wearing slim tapered jeans, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get these over the shaft. Uh, these are Flint and Tinder All-American Selvage jeans and stretch denim. So let me just stretch Selvage denim. Let's just see if I can get this over, otherwise I'll... Oh no, you're yeah, good. Well done, Flint and Tinder. Put the buckle on just to tighten the uh, instep. I expect this leather to stretch, so I'm not too concerned with that. Zips open, buckles undone. <clears throat> Bit of a plonk. These boots are like all heritage boots half size down from Brannock. So my Brannock size is eight and a half US. In D width, these are eight D. And if you're concerned, there is an online sizing tool that you can use by scanning a QR code on your website. Okay, I'm, I'm very surprised. These are slim tapered jeans from Flint and Tinder from their uh, American stretch salvage collection. I didn't think they'd go over the shaft, but Looks, works quite well. I'll pull the, uh, a leg over in a minute to show you the shaft, but they fit really well. 
first fitting's really good. The uh, view from the top down is interesting. Not sure if that light shows, but you know, without the laces, pretty interesting. Almost like a like a the, how you'd expect a pair of bedroom slippers to look. Yeah, and again, I've got that immediate Russell Moccasin feedback from my feet, where sure I can feel the rubber outsole, but it it's flexing really well, and I can feel what I'm standing on. <laughs> I can feel the carpet, uh, the way the uh, the moccasin lasted vamp you know, from underneath up works is that I feel like my feet are cupped in this pool of comfort. As I move around, there's a tiny, tiny bit of heel slip, potentially because these are not broken in. I just need to make sure I'm flexing and they break in. And with all pull-up boots, Chelsea's, cowboy boots, engineers, I think you have to accept that there is, you know, up to a quarter inch uh, heel slip, even when they're well broken in. Uh, people do sort of get on social media and say, oh my goodness, I've bought these new Chelsea's and I'm, I've got heel slip, you know, I've got cowboy boots and this heel slip, they don't fit well. Well, it's to be expected in the pull-up boot. Tightening and cinching down the buckle might help. How does it look if I rolled up my Jeans? Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'll just show you <laughs> what the shaft looks like, but that is not the way I'm wearing this. Um, and not forgetting, I guess you, you'd be wearing these with wider jeans, uh, hunting pants. Uh, if you're doing smart casual to the office, which I think you can get away with this, smart casual, not business casual, um, if you're wearing smart casual to the office, you can wear this with a pair of chinos, even with a pair of wool pants, I think. And I draw the distinction between smart casual and business casual in the sense that uh, business casual to me is a nice pair of pants, whether it's chinos or wool, and a nice blazer and a nice uh, button-up shirt. Smart casual could well be polos, a smart t-shirt, uh, reasonably dark denim, uh, and you would not wear smart casual into a lawyer's office or a, uh, an accountant's office if you work there. Okay, let's wind up. So that's it. Um, the try-on was a success. I really like the way these feel. If you'd like to know um, the, the Russell Moccasin philosophy, hence this boot philosophy channel, um, I had an interview with Luke Colby, the CEO of Russell Moccasin, who provides a very eye-opening view on uh, how a bootmaker business should think and work. Really like that. So you can go and watch his interview up here. So in summary, I really like the feel of this. I would love the backcountry. Uh, the, the, the tall slip-on boot is interesting to me. I tried my first um, pair of engineer boots from Cordobes recently, and, and I like them. You know, they're, they're just new to me, that's all. The comfort of these immediately is fantastic. Just the way that you feel with that vamp cupping your, cupping your feet from the bottom up and that immediate um, feedback you get as you're walking around. I'm going to enjoy putting these through your paces and then I'll obviously bring you a longer review uh, of how they, they sort of uh, uh, wear in real life. Uh, so I just want to remind you, <laughs> Don't forget to click on like and subscribe because that really helps my channel uh, to help it grow and, and actually get out to more people, to educate more and more people about boots. So uh, until the next time, keep an eye out for my full review of these. Look after yourselves out there and I'll see you again soon.